which God is looking down on me. Just, <laughs> uh, who is blessing this congregation? You see a man with a long beard and flowing robes. Does he have an elephant face? Does he look like a human being? Or does he have two heads? Is he really above there? No. Up there. And is heaven really up there? I don't know, maybe I have to wait till I die before I give you those answers. Don't come to me. <laughs> Did man create God in his image? Or did God create man in his, in his image or her image? And the veins on a leaf are incredible. And the, the whole idea that we are floating in the middle of this wonderful dark space is incredible. But is somebody sitting there directing operations? Or can I offer an alternative theory? What you see outside now, or what you see when you look out into space, is just space. What if I said that if it were possible to shine a light into that space, and I'm not talking about the space in the room, I'm talking about space in the universe. It would appear to you as a complicated web, a connected, interconnected web. Can you even imagine that? That's what scientists today believe that dark matter is. <clears throat> Everything in the universe is incredibly connected. And everything in the universe manifests in the same way. That perfection that you're talking about, a walnut looks like a human brain. The circles in a cabbage look like a labyrinth. The veins on a leaf are the veins in your heart. Water moves around in a spiral, in a clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere and an anti-clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere. But the same spiral, the chakra, that's revolving within you. These are incredible miracles that are taking place every single day. The whole world, the whole of creation, the whole possibility that today brings is God. That is a power. That is a power that we don't understand, that we can't tap into fully. But what you don't understand is the same power that created all of that, that network that I talked about of matter, of, of web, that web, that consciousness, that is inside you. And my whole purpose is for you to stop thinking that it's Jesus that's going to give you your answers. It's Krishna that's going to give you your answers. It's Sri Sri and Jolosteen and this one and that one that's going to give you your salvation. The power is yours. So when you meditate, what are you doing? 
you're only tapping into the same field of energy that created everything. Ten thousand years later, when the scientists tell you that, and when you're in your, you know, fifty thousandth birth, then you're going to believe it. But I'm telling you, you can feel it now. This is what it means to be codified. It means to take the power of your life back into yourself. And when you take that power, that is not that is not a selfish use, right? Because what you're doing is not about what happens in this outside world, but what happens inside of you, the kind of person that it makes you. You never get up from a feeling from meditation with a feeling that you are better than anyone else. But yes, you feel that you are equal to everything else. It is in that only in that meditation that you can actually see someone's success as your own. If you have left your meditation for several hours and you start looking at a website and you see someone in the same field as you and you say, what the heck? How does she get that? And I don't. It is only when you meditate and you see the sameness in everything that you realize that that is an extension of yourself. If you fold yourself every day, because you're listening to your mind, your mind is saying, no, your heart is saying, I'm telling you that in meditation, it's all one, but your mind is saying, no, why? It likes it that way. And you can choose whoever you want to pick, your mind or the real God which is inside of you, the real God that lives and breathes as you. You don't have to go anywhere to be godified. Right here, right now, in the condition that you are, I always used to get really mad when you have your period that you can't go to the temple. Why? Why? Oh, you have bad energy during when you have your period. Yeah. You sit in a room when you, yeah, during that time. If you lose, a, in, uh, in our tradition, if you lose a, a spouse, for one year you can't pray. Why? Why? What kind of a punishing God is that that denies you his existence just because you've had a physical loss? The whole idea of God is for you to realize that you are not alone. That you have the whole power of creation behind you. Isn't that an amazing thought? That this entire, that that which created this, all of this, is you. That is being godified. Yet, I always say the truth is contradictory, right? I always say one thing and I say the rest the opposite after five minutes. Your journey is alone. Your journey is alone. As long as you think of God as an outward manifestation, you are belittling the very idea of God or what we want to believe as God because God or that which created this, what we call Brahman in, in the Sanskrit tradition or consciousness or you want to call it uh, Barbie doll, you want to call it anything you want, is bigger than our senses can even 
put a handle on, get a, get a handle on it. We can't use words <coughs> to describe how magnificent that is. It is an experience. And that experience, you get a glimpse of it in deep meditation. In deep meditation, at some point, there is a stillness that comes. The universe is very still. It doesn't appear to be kinetic. It appears to be static. Yet it is continually evolving, evolving and changing. In that silence and that stillness. The mind and the world loves the out outside. And the outside world is one of action. But the inner world, the one that is truly godified, that is totally connected, is calm is still and your small mind will see the God in the vision that you create so the Hindu will see God appearing as Krishna the Christian will see God appearing as Jesus the Muslim will see God appearing as Allah and they're all correct it's the same road that leads back to yourself Everything begins and ends here. And that's why. And this is the secret to happiness. Happiness is not getting money or getting fame or getting power. If you saw the video I posted today, we run after pleasure and we run away from pain. And somewhere between this continual bustle in the center where there's nothing, there is happiness. Just now. Can you bring a smile on your face? Just close your eyes and feel that power. Just feel it. Imagine, keep your arms, fingers open, you're going to feel a tingling. Feel the power. There is a tingling in your fingers as you receive. yourself up, you will find that God within yourself. You will find that peace, that joy. You can open your eyes. Did you feel a tingling? See, when you want to receive, you can receive. This is the power that heals. This is the power. And it's in your grasp. It is yours. If you only stopped giving that power away. I know for many years, for many generations, for many thousands and thousands of years, they have tried to tell you that come to the church, come to the temple. And when you didn't do it, they said that you would be punished if you didn't. They made God into a frightening, punitive, fearful person but the most compassionate in the, your moments of ultimate compassion and kindness 
and beauty when you look at something when tears come into your eyes and you're overwhelmed that is God that is the energy that is the beauty there is nothing scary or frightening about this power but because people needed to find a little time for that inner search they said okay we'll teach you a prayer and you say it when you say it you don't think of anything but God because they didn't know how to surrender to themselves how do you tell uh, ordinary uh, if I go and tell the garbage truck you know surrender to yourself and you know find the peace in your heart he's gonna wonder what I'm talking about right <laughs> to him I say come every Sunday a God will strike you down and he goes so at least he goes right at least he does it religion is for the less evolved they need something outward they need a place to go to they need an altar to get into that space once you make it an inward affirmation of your faith then every place is a church everything is fine it's all good it's not bad I'm not saying that it's bad it's another way it's another route for those that can only reach you know grade four but you want to graduate right you want to move on and move ahead but you have to go to grade four to move on you know to, to get to the fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth and move on doesn't mean that you disrespect anyone who's stuck at grade four they think that they are the ones that graduated and you are stuck in grade four doing some nonsense you're weird you're strange I hear all these things all the time and I stop trying to persuade people you know this is something that you cannot really explain at one moment when you're meditating you're watching the videos you're doing the breathing just comes to you it just comes to you in a flash and you understand how powerful it is and how it can make all the difference to living your life effortlessly after all, what are we here on this planet for or what are we here for we just want to make our time from birth to death effortless right who wants the stress Something happens, someone loses a job, someone dies, someone is born. It's just stuff happening. There's so much beauty around. When you get into that space, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. And you see, once you're connected to everything that's so huge and so... What are you? In the, in, in, when you compare yourself to the vastness of this universe and the vastness of creation... What are you? What does it matter what you think about religion? Who cares? Who cares about anything that you do or think? Does it even matter? The only thing that matters is how connected you are. And that happens as you meditate, you learn to be meditative. You take your meditation into your real life. And every time you find you're lost in this outer world, you know how to bring it back. You stop it for a moment. For one single moment, you stop everything. And you just get into that space. That space that is calm, that is peace, that is joy. That is your connection. It's like this invisible thread. A spider web, a spider has let down this invisible, that is your invisible thread. And you color it and you 
see the connection to this whole beautiful world. And you say, aha, life is so beautiful.